Hey everyone, Mr. MC here. This is a guide for round two of the 2023 Toyota Gazoo Racing GT Cup taking place at Sardinia Road Track B with the 2020 Toyota GR Yaris. Taking a quick look at the race details, 10 lap race for those in GT2 and 3, 15 lap race for those in GT1. We're in a fully stock Toyota GR Yaris, so there's no tuning involved with this. We're only on the sports hard tires. And fuel is a times one for the race, but tire wear is a times 18. So tire wear is going to be a royal pain in the behind. And for this race, there are no mandatory pit stops. And since we're only using one tire type, there's no mandatory tires. So let's go ahead and get started with the lap guide where with this car, you want to shift when the bar is around 80 to 90% full. Then you want to bring yourself towards the right side of the track and break at around the 130 meter mark. So before the wall on the right ends, full braking power going down to third gear, turn in with a curb on the right ends. Just try to be really smooth with your inputs as this car will slide around if you give it a chance to slide around. For this left turn, you can go up to fourth gear mid turn, but just do a little bit of throttle control to try to maintain your momentum. Then brake before the barrier on the right ends. Uh, you do want to brake pretty early for this turn, as this is where the car will slide around if you give it a chance to. Turning in before the curb on the right ends, going on to third gear, and again, just try to be smooth with your inputs as this car will slide around, especially on this turn. And you want to be really careful about that. Then brake and turn in before the barrier on the left starts. So again, just try to be careful with your inputs. Try to bring yourself towards the red and white curves. Go up to fourth gear just before you start to accelerate your way out. Again, try to take advantage of the red and white curves as they will help you a bit with your turn in. Go up to fifth gear. Take this left turn flat out, but stay towards the left and brake shortly after you go under the Gran Turismo sign just up above. So you're going to brake as much as you can, going on to third gear, turn in when the curb on the left is just about to end, really trying to maintain your speed through this turn, get on the throttle as soon as you hit the apex, bring yourself towards the right. You're braking just as the barrier on the right is about to start. Turn in right away and you're using around 50% braking power, maybe even sending 5% braking power for a short moment. But when you hit the apex, you want to get on the throttle as soon as you can. Go up to fourth gear, turn in with a curb on the right ends and just do a little bit of throttle control through the penultimate corner. And for the final braking zone, you're braking just before you reach this gap that is on the right. Full braking power for a short moment and just be really gradual with your turning. Just trying to be really smooth to prevent the car from sliding around too much. Get the car set up for the start finish line and get on the throttle as soon as you can. So in a moment, we'll complete this lap and then we'll go ahead and take a look at the race strategies. And just as we're about to start the clip, this is a great start with a false start check, so make sure you have your foot on the brake just before the lights go green or the lights go off. Traction control on in case if you need it for the great start. And with that said, this is a 10 lap race for those in GT2 and 3 leagues, 15 lap race for those in GT1 league, where fuel is a times one, so fuel is not an issue at all, but tire wear is a times 18 in tire wear is a royal pain in the behind, especially for the front right tire because the front right tire takes a huge beating throughout the entire race, whether you're in GT2 and 3 or if you're in GT, you're in GT1, that front right tire is going to cause a lot of problems. So whether you're doing 10 laps or 15 laps, your main goal is to make that front right tire last as long as possible because this is a zero stop race. Later on in the video, I will show why the one stop will not work. So for this race, smooth driving is the name of the game because you want to try to keep your tires alive for as long as possible. The way that I went about it for this replay was to 
break just a little bit earlier than where I normally break. So for example, if for turn one, I'm normally breaking at the 125 meter mark, I'll break at the 130 meter mark. That way I can set myself up for a smoother entry into turn number one and reduce the chances of having the car slide around as the GR Yaris will slide around if you give it the chance to as really soft suspension and the sports hard tires they don't have that much grip so this car will slide around if you give it the chance to so by braking just a little bit earlier and being a bit slower with my downshifts I can get a smoother entry into a turn especially any left turns and that way the car doesn't slide around and I can use less steering input and that'll also save a bit of the tire wear as well. Again, just trying to be really smooth with these turns, especially the turn that we just went through. That turn is going to be notorious for having the car slide around. So again, just brake a little bit earlier, give the car a smoother entry. That way you don't slide around as much and your tires last a little bit longer. And again, you just need to be really careful because if you start to get into any unnecessary slides, Doing it once is the equivalent of doing it 18 times due to the tire wear multiplier. So yeah, you really want to be careful about how you're driving around for this race. Uh, try not to get yourself into too many battles or any unnecessary battles as that will cost you quite a bit of tire life, especially if you have to go through any left turns that will destroy your tires. I mean, you can even see towards the end of lap number two right now. There's already quite a bit of tire wear on the front right tire, so yeah, this race is gonna get pretty uh, interesting, awkward, scary. I mean, it's not the worst tire wear. I mean, it's not the rear tires wearing out, it's the front tires wearing out. Uh, going over towards the end of lap number six, yeah, that's where the front right tire really showing signs of tire wear. I'm actually not losing too much time, just trying to keep it nice and clean through out my run and actually getting my best lap at the end of lap number five so not losing that much time mostly consistent time so things are looking good until we reach the end of the race for those in gt2 and 3 so this is the end of lap number 10. laps number 8 to 10 is where the tower will start to really make its presence known but this will depend on how well you treat your tires throughout the race so if you're really harsh on your tires, then then the tire wear will kick in sooner. And I don't know what happened on lap number nine. I think I just went a little too slow as I should be getting that sort of lap time this early into the race. Should be getting low 136s, not high 136s. But anyways, uh, that was the end of the race for those in GT2 and 3 where Name of the game is to drive as smoothly as possible to keep that front right tire alive as long as possible. The total time I got was a 16 minutes and 7 second run for GT2 and 3 settings, but we're going to continue on with GT1 settings as we're doing a 15 lap race now. But yeah, uh, it's going to get pretty ugly because that front right tire is just about to completely wear out. The car is getting pretty understory, especially whenever I have to make a left turn. And this little kink right here, you do want to be a little careful because if you enter it wrong, you can end up understeering into the barrier. Ask me how I know about that. But these right turns are not as bad as uh, the other tires are still in pretty good shape. It's just the front right tire that is not in good shape. So. Whenever you have to make a left turn, that's where you're going to lose time. That's where you're really going to feel this car get understeery. So you do want to be careful about how you're making a left turn now. Uh, end of lap number 11, this is basically where I, ha I have 100% tire wear on the front right tire. So now I really got to be careful about how I'm making a left turn because yeah, if you're not careful, you will understeer off of the track. Ask me how you know about that as well. Definitely did not have a run ruined because I got too impatient. Uh, again, breaking early because I want to make sure that I don't overshoot turn number one and go off into the gravel because that will 
that will result in a lot of wasted time. And again, just really doing a lot of throttle control, just waiting for the car to complete the turn before I get on the throttle, braking pretty early, just crawling around these left turns. It, it gets pretty painful. But believe it or not, doing five, six, seven laps on completely worn front right tires is still faster than a one stop. Yeah, you heard that right. A zero stop, even with a completely dead tire, is faster than a one stop. And I'll quickly go on over towards the end of the race where I'm, cr I'm still crawling around the track. And in the next clip, you'll see why the one stop is still slower than a zero stop with a completely worn front tire. So at the end of this run, this was a 24 minute and 15 second run, and this was with a zero stop. So to show why the one stop would not work, I went ahead and grabbed my zero stop run on the left and my one stop run on the right, synced them up together towards the same uh, session time, and went ahead and pressed play. So we're at the end of lap number eight. The one stopper that is on the right is about to pull on into the pit stop and go for a tire change while the zero stop on the left is going to carry on just try to tire save as much as possible while not trying not to lose too much time. And this is the main problem with the one stop is that it takes forever to get a uh, pit stop done. We're already almost 20 seconds into the pit time session and the car just barely popped up into the pit box. And the one stopper is just barely coming out of the pit box while the zero stopper is already around 25% done with the lap. And here's the thing, so the one stopper on those brand new sports hard tires, he's gonna get 135s, maybe 136s towards the end of the race. And that's still not gonna be enough to catch up to the zero stopper who is doing 136s and 137s towards the end of the race because the pit loss was so big 25 and a half second pit loss. The pit loss is so big that even if the one stopper was going as fast as possible, it's still not going to be enough to catch up to the zero stopper. The zero stopper crosses the finish line right now, and as I mentioned earlier, the zero stopper got a 24 minute and 15 second run, whereas the one stopper, yeah, he's going faster, he has newer tires, but the pit loss was so big that he ends up getting a 24 minutes and 31 second run. So even with a completely dead tire, the zero stopper was still able to beat the one stopper because the one stopper has to go through a 25 second pit loss. So if you're gonna do this race, well, get ready to do some good old tire sim because yeah, this race is gonna be difficult. Oh boy, this is gonna be a fun race. But if you're gonna do this race, good luck, hopefully, you're able to tire save your way into a win, but that's going to be all for this video. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get ready for this race because I need to practice some more. So take care and I'll see you in the next video.